We have enough food in the world to feed us all. It's just that the supply is unevenly distributed, as well as rates of consumption. With increased population growth comes a need to increase production to meet the demand. So, what strategies can be used to increase our supply? Let's find out. There are a number of different methods used to increase food production. Irrigation is the artificial watering of the land. It's particularly needed when there's less water available during the growing seasons and often involves extracting water from rivers and aquifers. These are underground stores of water. Irrigation schemes range from the small and direct drip irrigation in places like Kenya to the large and expensive schemes where dams, reservoirs and pipes have benefited large commercial farms through gravity flow systems in places such as Pakistan. Appropriate technology is a critical first step towards development and food security in many LICs. This takes the form of local people using their practical skills and cheap materials that help to increase output whilst keeping them employed. These are suited to the environment, needs, knowledge and wealth of the people in the area. Small-scale water harvesting and drip irrigation helps local communities to become more productive whilst using local products and keeping costs down. Individual wells with human-powered pumps are more suitable and cheaper to run, whilst planting local varieties of crops is the most suitable form of planting. The Green Revolution came about in the 1950s and 60s. It started the development of the use of technology and new strains of plants and really started to increase the supply of food in many LICs. The new Green Revolution now looks at making agriculture more sustainable for small communities. The focus has moved to irrigation, soil conservation, water harvesting and using science and technology to improve the quality of the farming product. There's also the redevelopment of traditional methods like sensible crop rotation and the use of natural predators to control pests to limit the environmental impact of producing food. Biotechnology in food supply is related to genetically modified or GM crops. More crops can be grown in a small area using far fewer resources. These are modified crops that need less water, can be disease resistant, can have higher nutritional values and can even reduce CO2 emissions. They've been grown all around the world and have had great success in increasing output, such as maize in the Philippines producing a 24% yield increase, or C4 rice breed that increase yields by 50%. Some are not keen on GM crops because of the potential for interbreeding with wild plants that could disrupt the local ecosystems. High-tech solutions are also being further developed. Where most plants get their nutrients from the soil, newer techniques actually deliver the nutrients straight to the plant. This allows a faster growth rate on land that might not be suitable for traditional farming and allows growth all year round. Some complain about the lack of taste in the food, whilst running costs can be very high. Two such techniques are aeroponics and hydroponics. The prefix of hydro implies water, and this is where plants are grown in mineral-rich water or growing medium, like gravel. Aero implies something in the air or atmosphere, and this is where nutrient-rich water is sprayed as a fine mist over the plant roots, which are suspended in the air. By collecting and reusing the water, costs are kept low. In both methods, the plants are closely monitored to allow for farmers to adjust their nutrient levels and maximize their yields. But both methods have a high setup cost and only really work on high yield crops like lettuce or tomatoes. We can see that the strategies to improve our global food supply are both large scale and small scale. It's vital that all methods are used in order for us to maintain our supplies of food.